the board docs up here. Um, would you join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? Please mute your microphone. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, why don't we, uh, first of all, if, uh, whoever's in the council chambers, um, if that person could be identified, I know all of you don't have a microphone, but. Hi, Alder, Marilyn Donahue. Marty, if you're in the chambers, could you just introduce who's there? Yeah, so in the council chambers, we have city administrator Todd Wolf, assistant city administrator Carrie Ahrens, we have accountant two, Lori Serkey, HR director, Vicki Schneider, deputy finance director, Tara Dewey. Uh, controlling the video is Scott Meliff. And then we have our guest, uh, our auditor, Brian Grunwald from Clifton Larson Allen. All right, very good. And then um, whoever's online or on the call rather. Alderman Jim Boren. All right, we heard from Jim. Who else is on the line? Uh, Elder Trey Mitchell. Okay, Trey, welcome. Marcus Savalio, Alderman District 5. Perfect. I'm Kevin, City Attorney. Thomas Cameron, Assistant City Attorney. Could, uh, who's MH? Oh, that's Marty. Okay, very good. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, and we'll get started here. Um, if I could have a motion to approve the minutes of our uh, August 24th meeting. So moved. So moved. Second. All right, so I'm gonna call that as Marcus making the motion and Trey seconding. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. Very good. We will go on then to 3.1, which is a direct referral submitting the comprehensive annual financial report for the city uh, for the year ending December 31st, 2019. And Brian Grunwald, I assume you are up, or uh, Marty, how, how are you guys going to do this? Yes. Uh... The uh, presentation that Brian Grunwald will be doing uh, for our annual financial report, uh, you'll find on your screen as a PowerPoint. So my screen will be shared so everyone can be viewing it. Uh, another item that you might have uh, had and hopefully you're able to kind of toggle between the screens would be the actual annual financial report which was attached to the board docs. So with that, certainly I know we've got a long agenda and some big things. I'm going to just turn it over to Brian and uh, we'll go through his presentation. All right, sounds good. This is Brian Grunewald uh, with Clifton Larson Allen. Uh, thank you for having me here this evening. Um, and I also do want to thank Marty and Tara and the rest of your staff for the cooperation and assistance that we received uh, throughout the audit process. In terms of the discussion here, I'm just going to walk through the PowerPoint. Uh, Marty alluded to the fact that you also had the link for the, for the annual financial report. As we get into the financial information, just understand that we've pulled some of this uh, from that annual, annual financial report to try to lay it out in, in a graph format to give you a little bit more of a trend. Uh, but certainly if anyone has any questions on any of the documents, please feel free to, uh, to ask. Okay, this first slide here, just wanted to give you a summary of the, uh, of the overall audit results. The, uh, the first bullet point there is focusing on the uh, independent auditor's opinion. Uh, that's on the basic financial statements. That is considered to be an unmodified opinion. Essentially means that I believe that your financial statements are complete and accurate and in accordance with our professional standards. The, uh, the second bullet point there, as part of every governmental audit, we continue to focus on uh, the financial reporting and the internal control over that financial reporting. Essentially, we're looking at how things are done. We do not issue an opinion on your internal control, but we do use that in terms of uh, risk assessment, planning, uh, making sure that we understand the, uh, the organization. In terms of the, uh, the bullet points presented there, there are three items. Those are listed as findings. Now, I will say that those are 
similar to what you saw for 2018, uh, those being the preparation of the annual financial report. Um, that one really focuses on the fact that we, as your auditors, are the ones who are preparing that document. Certainly, we do work with Marty and Tara. We ask them to review that, that document. Um, certainly, we want to make sure that everybody's on the same page with regards to the numbers and the information that is presented there. The, uh, the second item focuses on adjustments to the city's financial records. As part of the audit process, we do work with Marty and their team to verify the numbers. It is common and we have identified adjustments as a part of that process. I do want to communicate that all adjustments that I'm aware of are included in the annual financial report that you have. And then similarly there, the last item, general ledger reconciliations. Uh, again, as part of the audit process, we've assisted with uh, some of that information. Again, just going through the process of making sure that we're comfortable uh, with the numbers and, they, and that we agree with the numbers. Um, in terms of the next item there, just focusing on the report on compliance for federal and state programs. Um, from, a, from a compliance standpoint, no issues, no concerns with regards to compliance. Um, any thoughts or questions on that slide before I move on? I have a question on the internal controls. Yep, okay. Uh, Brian, I was wondering. Jim, um, yes. if you don't mind, I just going to let Brian Brian, how long is your presentation? Uh, it'll probably be five to 10 minutes. Okay, uh, Jim and other alders, if you don't mind, I just soon hold questions until we get through the presentation and then we can take the questions. Is that all right, Jim? That's fine. Great, thanks. Go ahead, Brian. Okay, sounds good. Then I will, uh, I will keep moving along. The, uh, the next slide here, management communications. Um, there is information and standard guidance that we are required to communicate as part of every audit process. This list of bullet points lists some of those items. It's certainly not an all-inclusive list. Um, it should be items that you have seen in the past that, that the communication has been fairly consistent. Uh, things like accounting policies, accounting estimates, uh, et cetera. Nothing here that I would consider to be unusual or a red flag, just uh, more of a standard communication and wanted you to be aware that those topics were discussed and have been communicated. Then moving on to the next slide. This next one just gives you a, an overview of the financial condition. Um, and there are additional slides that support these bullet points here, but the first one focuses on the general fund fund balance. From a fund balance perspective, continue to have strong reserves. You've had a strong year financially. Your reserves did increase. We'll see a slide that, that highlights or emphasizes that. The second and third bullets uh, focus on long-term debt. Just wanted to give you some perspective on long-term debt. Uh, the amount presented in the annual financial report, and this is only your general obligation that is 49 million. Uh, there is a footnote disclosure in there. There was some discussion about the statutory debt limit. Um, and then the third bullet point is really focusing on the debt that you have looking at repayment. You know, obviously that's based on the terms that you agree to at the time you enter into that debt. Um, one of the things financial <laughs> consultants and rating agencies look for is when they look at financial condition, how much debt do you have? How is that going to be repaid, et cetera? So that's what that's focusing on. The next bullet point focuses on the sewer system, uh, looking at your cash reserves as well as your equity reserves in terms of sewer. Um, your, both of those actually increased 2.7 million. So again, a strong year financially for the sewer system. Uh, the, last, the next bullet point there focuses on working capital for health insurance and workers' compensation. I have another slide that walks you through that. You do have strong reserve balances and working capital uh, in that fund. And then the last bullet point, the Harbor Center Marina. Certainly we've been focused on the, the deficit that's communicated and presented within the annual financial statements. Uh, just did want to point out that the deficit, the amount of that deficit did decrease from uh, 2018 to 2019. Okay, and then just moving on into some of the detailed slides. This slide presents your general fund fund balance, and I always like to look at your trends. So this just gives you a snapshot of your overall general fund fund balance or your overall reserves for your general fund. Uh, again, looking through the trend, you can see uh, back in 2015, you were at approximately 23.5 uh, million. Um, if you work across fairly consistent through 2017, you did have a planned use of fund balance moving into 2018 bringing you down to right around 20 million. And then from, from 2018 to 2019, 
you'll see a slight increase in the overall fund balance. That's the $1.7 million increase in your fund balance reserves for 2019. If you get into the details of the individual category in the table beneath that, a uh, couple that I like to focus on, the, the unassigned, and we'll talk more about that. There's another slide that focuses on the unassigned. That is the amount that has not been earmarked or set aside for other purposes. Um, it's available for things like working capital and contingency reserves. And I know you do have a policy that addresses that, but this is just giving you a snapshot of your balances. Um, and again, you can see as you work across that graph, uh, 17.9 million at the end of 2015, and you can see 17.7 million at the end of 2019. Uh, the assigned and committed, those are really, again, I refer to those as your planning categories, uh, amounts that um, you've identified to be earmarked for different purposes. Um, there is additional information with regards to the detail of those on pages 72 and 73 um, in your annual financial report. This is just giving you a, summar a summarized presentation. And then the last item there, the last line, focusing on your non-spendable. Those amounts are non-spendable because they're not available. Um, really things that have been um, tied up or committed with things like long-term receivables, you haven't collected the cash for those yet, or things like inventory and prepaids, where from an accounting standpoint, those dollars have been set aside for those purposes or invested in those purposes. And if we move on to the next slide, this slide just gives you some perspective and uh, focusing on your general fund again, but in terms of your total fund balance, as well as your unassigned, how much fund balance do you have in dollars in comparison to the amount of expenditures that are flowing through your budget on an annual basis? You know, certainly when you work across the graph, some fluctuation there, you do see a little bit of a downward trend for both the total and the unassigned. Um, I always like to look at this. The message that I guess I'd like to leave you with is when you look at this, and particularly focusing on that blue line, that unassigned, you're ending the year at 48%. I mean, that's, uh, that is a very, very strong number. Um, there's additional information or additional disclosure on page 74 in your financial statement that does get into your policy, um, which references 25%. So certainly from a fund balance perspective, I mean, you've had strong reserves, you continue to have strong reserves. Um, certainly, um, I think that's evident in this slide. Then I also wanted to give you uh, just a snapshot of some of the other funds. And just keep in mind that these are summarized uh, by the fund type, special revenue, capital projects, debt service, et cetera. I'm not gonna get into a lot of detail here. Um, for the most part, the categories are fairly consistent, meaning your fund balance reserves in those different fund types are consistent, uh, with the exception of that green category, the debt service. Um, there you can see the spike in 2018, and that's really just due to timing of a debt refinancing transaction that occurred at the end of 18 that carried forward into 2019. Essentially, you had received debt proceeds and not made the payment to pay down those funds until early January of 2019. So that explains the spike there. Um, really nothing unusual um, with regards to your other, other balances there. And then also wanted to uh, step back from a special revenue fund perspective. Um, you know, certainly we've talked about the marina in the past. This slide just gives you some perspective on the marina and that marina deficit. Uh, again, as you work across the slide, it, it is in a deficit position. You have been coming out of that slowly. If you focus just on 18 to 19, you know, the amount of that deficit did decrease slightly. Uh, you still continue to have a fund balance deficit of approximately 2.5 million there. So, but um, I know it's something you've been dealing with. Certainly nice to see it moving in the positive direction. And then this next slide wanted to give you a snapshot of your, your general fund, This is, or excuse me, your general obligation debt. And just keep in mind that this is net of the reserves that you have within the debt service fund balance. Um, you know, again, looking through 2015 through 2018, uh, fairly consistent. For the end of 2019, you did have approximately 48.1 million of general obligation debt outstanding, net of that fund balance in your debt service fund of 11.5 million, uh, leaving you with a net of 36.6 million. In terms of your overall debt, I'd say just keep in mind, I know, I know we're into September already, I mean, this is as of 1231.19. And then also wanted to give you uh, some perspective on the sewer system and their net position or their equity reserves. Again, as you work through this, there is a slight increase in your 
in your equity reserves over time. Um, again, the highlight here, I think, is the increase from 2018 to 2019, that $2.7 million increase uh, in your overall net equ equity. Um, and again, it is also an increase in your cash balance. Um, and if you, if you look at the individual categories, the ones that I really want to focus on, the last line presented there, that unrestricted component, again, that's the amount that's available for working capital. You can see you're at $6.8 million at 2015. Again, moving across the table, you can see that just over $7 million uh, at the end of 2019. And certainly the point there is you do need to continue to obviously understand your rate structure, continue to think about how you're going to continue to reinvest in capital. Um, but from, a, from 2019's perspective, certainly a strong year financially. And I know I'm going through this pretty quickly. I also wanted to just give you a snapshot of, uh, this is just focusing on two of the internal service funds, the, uh, the green component focusing on your health insurance and the darker category, the darker blue focusing on the workers' comp. Um, you can see the fluctuation there. Again, I think my message would be is if you calibrate the line and understand the amounts that you have there, you know, from a, from a um, reserve perspective, the health insurance or the green category, you're at approximately 4.1. If you relate that to the amount of expenses flowing through that fund, approximately 6.6 .6 million in expenses, you know, certainly a strong relationship in terms of your reserve balances in comparison to the amount of expenditures. Uh, and similarly, for the workers' comp, uh, your expenses flowing through that fund for 2019, approximately 440,000 versus 2.3 million in reserves. And, and I know I went through that pretty quickly. That's all the financial information that I had um, pr prepared. So, I mean, maybe just to recap, in terms of the findings and the internal control, I know there was a question that's going to come up on that, but you know, those are repeat findings and conditions. Um, certainly that doesn't mean that there hasn't been any changes or progress on that. Um, we're just, our requirement is to disclose the conditions that exist during that audit year. So technically those conditions do exist. When you step back and think of that slide with the financial overview, um, really a lot of positive financial information there financially. Your fund balance reserves in particular uh, for your general fund are certainly very strong. Okay, that being said, I'll turn it over to any questions. Go ahead, Jim. Thank you, Madam Chair. <clears throat> Brian, first I have a general question and then I have uh, a couple of specific questions. Uh, when you're dealing with your municipal clients, City of Sheboygan and other ones, uh, corporations, LLCs, and this, this, this general question dates back to the CLA report that you did for us back in February. Uh, and if you don't want to give any specific advice for Sheboygan, I guess that's fine. Maybe you do. But my question is, in your experience with all the different types of governments, uh, corporations, LLCs that you deal with, do you generally recommend to those, to those clients that their employees be fidelity bonded, bonded for all employees that handle cash or other types of payments? Um. So I just want to step back and clarify that. So in terms of my role with CLA, I'm with our state and local government practice, meaning I, I do spend approximately 90% of my time working with state and local governments, that's county, cities, uh, other types of government. I also do spend about 10% of my time with nonprofit organizations, um, but that's the limit of my exposure with our client base. I do not work on the, the private sector side or whatnot. In, in terms of you know, your, your question, now this is my personal opinion, um, you know, certainly I think you do have to be conscious of the fact that, you know, you are a, a, a public organization. Uh, you certainly need to maintain the public's trust. I certainly would, you know, I think your question is very valid. I think you certainly should consider uh, the risks associated with your internal control structure and your internal control environment. Uh, and I think, you know, bonding is certainly a, a part of that discussion or consideration. Thank you, Brian. My, my specific questions uh, on page 54 of the audit, uh, when you talk about, well, they're talking about interfund transfers uh, uh, that were made. Uh, first one for the municipal court was $296,000, and the transfer from the ambulance fund into the general fund was $1,919,670. In uh, information that I got from the uh, fire department today from Deputy Chief Butler, uh, the grand total of the collections 
uh, the actual collections for the ambulance service were uh, $1,306,850.58. My question is, the 919670 that was transferred into the general fund, why the difference? Would that be because some of the collections in the 1.3 were not in when uh, the transfer was made? I mean, certainly that could be a factor. Now, when I think of the ambulance fund, and there is a, a separate fund within your financial statements that presents the ambulance, um, some of what you're talking about is we record accounts receivable. There's a timing process between billing and collecting. So you got to get the cash in the door. Then you also have consideration of what other expenses do we have that may be recorded in that ambulance fund that get paid before we transfer money back. Uh, the amount that you're referring to, the 919, I mean, that's simply the net amount that is that truly is. It's, it's the amount transferred during uh, 2019. Older person okay, born. On page 70. Older person born, this is Marty. If I could also uh, elaborate a bit on that. Uh, one of the uh, discussion points that took place during uh, 2019 and in early into 2020 um, was whether we would be transferring everything out of that ambulance fund and into the general fund. Rather, the thought was to keep some funds in there for future ambulance replacement. Uh, maintaining some of the fund balance and cash position should we decide to purchase uh, some of these aging ambulances uh, through that fund, rather than doing it all through the capital projects. Okay, maybe that's part of the answer to my next question. On page 73, uh, where it gives you the general fund balance that was committed to the following, uh, for the municipal court, it was 29937 For the ambulance service, it was $521,208. Uh, I guess my question is, uh, the $521,000, is that part of what you talked about, Marty, or is that just seed for the, for the year 2020 until funds start coming in uh, to the ambulance uh, fund? Yeah, you're... you're Correct in that we did maintain some, in a sense, seed in there for the potential to purchase some of those. Uh, some of the transfer in the previous year in 2018 was not fully uh, completed either. So there was some adjustment in 19 for transfers over. But uh, the biggest thing was to try to estimate how much do we try to maintain as a reserve balance in there for future purchases. Okay. And one other question on, on the ambulance service. Uh, I know Daryl, I think uh, at least Daryl talked about it and possibly you did last year that there was gonna be at least one more employee, uh, employee salary and benefits going into the uh, ambulance expenses. Was that, I don't believe that was done yet in 19. Was it done for 20? And is it gonna be done for 21? It was not done for 19. It has, it has not been done for 20 as of yet. And we have not completed the budget process to the point where we would uh, get to that stage of determining that. And that will be a discussion though that uh, Administrator Wolf and I and Eric, Chief Eric Maniano will have. All right, thank you. That was, those are my questions. Does anyone else have any questions for Brian? Uh, hearing none, we would need a motion to recommend to the council to accept and file the document. So move, Boren. Second, Mark. All right. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. Brian, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Have a good day. And I will say if any additional questions do come up, uh, certainly you can work through Marty and I'd be more than happy to try to answer those as they come up. So thank you. Okay. We'll move on to uh, 3.2, which is a resolution uh, providing for the sale of approximately $11,190,000 in taxable general obligation refunding bonds. And who do we have up for that? Is Carol on the line? No, no, Carol. This is Madam Chair. This is Marty. I'm <coughs> myself and Administrator Wolf will take this. Uh, Carol did have a, a different engagement this evening, but she assured me should uh, any older person have a question that 
uh, Todd or I could not answer, we could easily uh, get the answer from her. So to, if you'd like me to start um, kind of going through this, oh, what, I, what I guess I would uh, encourage each of those uh, remote to uh, call up the report on refinancing that was attached to the agenda. Uh, this document was the report that uh, Carol put through. Um, had she been present, this is what she would have utilized to present off of. Um, I'm, I'm not going to read through it, but I guess I'm going to touch on some of the highlights and certainly uh, Administrator Wolf will uh, add in some additional details. Uh, what we are looking to do is an advance refunding, as we've mentioned, regarding the $10.49 million worth of NANs. Those were uh, taken out in June of 2018 to uh, purchase land and imp make improvements to roads, public utilities, grading, engineering, inspection, landscaping, signage, and capitalized interest uh, out in our tax incremental district uh, 18, our uh, enterprise campus, the business park. The maturity of these five years would be June of 2023 with a call date of June 1st, 2021. Uh, currently the NANs are having, they have an interest rate of 3.625. Uh, what we are looking at right now would be um, an, what's called an advanced refunding, which can only be done via a taxable refunding. Um, and there's several uh, components that we probably would have gotten to that point regardless of, of some of the, the criteria. The reason we're doing a taxable is because we are more, greater than 90 days in advance of that June 1st. Anytime you're within 90 days of the advance or of the uh, call date, you can do a tax exempt refunding. But uh, because we're beyond that, we're, we have to do a taxable. But the reason we probably would have gotten to be a taxable as well is to allow us to do some capitalized interest. Capitalized interest cannot be done uh, on a project that's complete unless it's a taxable refunding. So we are looking at capitalizing a little bit more interest on this. And the reason for that is the slowness or timeliness of the development in that uh, taxable increment district. Um, I believe many of you have been made uh, aware of some of the revised pro formas that Ellers had put together. And Carol Worth was also utilizing that to put her structure together uh, for how we would uh, construct a refunding. Um, with the refunding, um, with capitalized interest, it would look uh, to be along the lines of uh, borrowing $4.35 million and the ta true interest cost on that is around 1.93%. That's based off of some of the current market sales that um, Carol has had in the last several weeks. Obviously, those are all subject to change based on uh, changes within the market. Um, the borrowing would be for 20 years, and it would uh, be structured in a, a framework of what's found on page four. And often what uh, Carol would generally tends to do is a level debt restructuring. However, in this instance, we did it a little bit different, again, referencing the uh, Ellers report that has, a, I guess, a, an average aggressiveness to it on how we believe we will be able to develop and main, or, uh, generate some tax increment within that district. Um, I guess at this point, um, like I said, I, I don't want to read through every aspect of the document that was attached. What Carol did do is include not only the uh, structure of this specific debt, but there's also a page in there on page six where it does show all of the debt that's already on, including this new revised debt, so that you can see what the debt service on our tax incremental district 18 is. And then slide seven or page seven was where the uh, revenue tax increment projections were, were put into place. Chair? Administrator Wolf, do you have anything to add? Yes, I do, thank you. Um, as Marty had pointed out, um, there's a couple of things that I just thought I'd add. First off, uh, I believe that we have a really good schedule here. 
Marty uh, brought up the fact that um, going off of Eller's uh, recommendations from what we had recommended, we're looking at uh, the first couple of years being a little bit soft, mainly because of development being where it is today. Also, the, the recalculation of the um, South Point Enterprise, we're looking at it to allow us to have a little bit of uh, a soft start in development. So that's been taken into consideration with this geo uh, compared to the NAN. I also wanted to point out that um, Moody's is actually very positive in, in changing a NAN to an actual geo. So this will be a very positive situation. The other thing I did want to point out is that we won't actually have to go through a Moody's um, full review because we just had a review less than a year ago. So that we'll still maintain the exact, from my understanding, the exact um, rating that we had before. And the other point that I did want to point out is obviously with the rates the way they are, we're again going to save money on interest going from a NAN to a GEO. Thank you. Uh, questions for Marty or Todd? Yeah, I've got a, I've got one question for Marty, Madam <coughs> Chair. Go ahead. Marty, uh, the, what Todd just mentioned with our interest payments going down between the two, uh, I know you shared with me earlier this year what we owed uh, in interest for uh, 2020. I, I, I don't I don't have it in front of me. Was it five or six hundred thousand uh, dollars? What would be the what 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 do you estimate the difference would be in our interest payments uh, by making this change? What would you predict it would be for 21? So on page four of the document um, is where we've got the estimated interest for just this portion of the of TID 18's debt. Uh, in 2021, it's uh, projected to be at $186,113. Uh, previously, we were paying every six months the $191,000. So Thank it's a, it, so it's about half. Thank you. So my question is probably for Todd. Um, I'm glad that Ehlers has a moderately optimistic view. Um, I, I guess I'm not, I, I support this. I mean, it financially certainly makes sense, but um, <laughs> do you have another marina on our hands here, except on a maybe a grander scale? Madam Chair, I, I I understand where you're where, where you're going with that, and I really hope that uh, we don't have the dry dock version. Um, we do have we do have the the development that um, opportunities are still out there. It's just that because of COVID, things kind of slowed down, as we know. We also know that we were being very aggressive because the market was hot when we uh, developed the South Point Enterprise. So with Ellers, we obviously recalculated that to be more realistic. And then with the uh, changing the NANs to a GEO, um, we tried to reflect that and also um, reflect the payback uh, according to having approximately three years of a soft uh, development cycle. So we're trying to take that into consideration. Um, and we do know that we still have some opportunities on the horizon. I hope I answered your question. Um, other questions? Other person, Donahue? Yes. One uh, point of clarification, I think, for Marty. Um, Marty, is this the correct version of the resolution? Um, I know there, the, the original amount was the 11.19 uh, <clears throat> million of refunding, and it looks like there's a, a little bit of discrepancy in the documents. I just want to make sure the right thing ends up coming out of committee. Thank you for pointing that out, Assistant Attorney Thomas Cameron. Uh, he is, Thomas is correct in that there was an original uh, resolution for the 11.19 million. And based on the uh, revised 
amounts, which included that extra year of capitalized interest, uh, you will find a revised resolution or an amended resolution as part of your documents attached to board docs. So when we do get to uh, the time of motion, uh, however, uh, Thomas or uh, City Attorney Chuck Adams would like to advise us on the easiest way to amend that so that the uh, recommendation uh, can include the amended uh, resolution. Well, just so I'm clear, are we talking about the resolution for the sale of 11435000 That is the amended uh, dollar amount. The original resolution that went through council that was referred was 11.19. And there should be that original resolution as well as the uh, drafted amended resolution from Quarles and Brady for the 11.435. All right. So what we're looking for here is a motion to recommend that the council adopt um, the resolution to issue sale of approximately $11,435,000 in taxable general obligation refunding bonds. Is that correct? That's correct, as long as we don't have to do any type of verbiage for the amendment. I don't want to make an amendment since you have a different document in front of you. So, you know, probably somebody moves in seconds to approve the, uh, uh, the RO and then, um, and then it gets, or not the RO, the resolution, and then it gets amended. Uh, to reflect the new resolution, which is in board docs, as I understand it. Is that the one that's attached to the IFC, Marty? Yes. Okay. And so, the, so then the, the motion to amend can just simply be to um, swap out the, the original resolution for the resolution in the IFC uh, and, then, and then go ahead and approve it. I'll make such a motion, Boren. All right. Second that track. If, if uh, whoever is taking the minutes uh, understands that, so our amended motion. It is not an amended motion. The motion is. The motion would be first just to simply approve the resolution. It sounds like All you right. got a motion and a second for that. Now All somebody right. should make a motion to amend the resolution to uh, to swap out the the language of the resolution that was re uh, referred to uh, committee with the language of the resolution that is contained in the IFC. All right, so uh, what we need then is an amendment, we need a motion rather to amend the resolution on the floor to reflect the uh, amount of uh, $11,435,000. Is there such a, a motion to amend? So moved to amend, Boren. Second, Marcus. All right, so we will vote on the amendment. Are there any questions before we vote? Hearing none, all in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. So we have on the floor a motion to approve the amended amount. Um, is there any discussion or questions with respect to the main motion as amended? Hearing none, all in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. All right, very good. That's a few hundred thousand dollars here and there, huh? So let's go back to our agenda. And we are looking at 3.3, which is submitting for our information, the revised 2021 budget schedule. Who would like to take that, Todd? Thank you, Madam Chair. It's basically uh, just a revised schedule after um, my two, two months of tenure in this position. We, uh, Carrie and I and Marty, we reviewed the dates uh, that will be coming to council just to give everybody an update on the progress that we're, take, we're making so far. Right. We don't need any action on this, or do? Yes, we do. There's a request that uh, that we recommend to the council to receive and file the document. Is there such a motion? So moved, Trey. And would there be a second? 
Second, Marcus Savalio, District 5. All right, any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair both side. Very good, all right. Um, 3.4 is a claim from Brian Wunsch for damage to his vehicle. Chuck? So the motion here would simply be to file this claim has been denied. Uh, it was denied because the uh, claim had to do with uh, uh, road damage and it does not fit under the types of claims that uh, are required to be paid for road damage. So the proper motion would be right. to file. Do we have a motion to file? Move to file. Second. All right, any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor state aye. 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 <laughs> any opposed? Chair votes aye. Don't fade away on me guys, come on. The fun has just begun. We are now at uh, 3.5, uh, which is a resolution authorizing the city officials to hold, uh, execute a hold harmless agreement uh, with respect to using Wisconsin Bank and Trust Building as a polling place. Thomas, is that yours? Or that is, that is not mine, I believe. Chair, Josh, Chair. Or... Mary Lynn, this is Todd. Oh, Todd, go ahead. I, I probably can speak to this. I asked uh, uh, Chuck to actually put this together. Um, in, due to the situation and status of the senior center, uh, I, I took it upon myself to contact uh, Paul Weaver, um, the owners of the A Street uh, Investments LLC, and uh, they were gracious enough to um, allow us to have the um, the voting in November at their location and the city will uh, use the facility. So this is basically just boilerplate to um, allow them to allow us to use the facility, but not um, to hold them harmless, obviously. All right. Any questions or concerns? Could we have a motion then to recommend approval of the uh, hold harmless agreement? So move, Boren. Second, Marcus. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. Thank you. We will move on to 3.6, which is a claim, a notice of claim from American Family Insurance with respect to damages to their insured Molly Lafine. Chuck? So on hand for you to uh, file, uh, this has been kind of sitting out there while we were waiting for a uh, release, but we did authorize uh, paying this in the amount of uh, $3,845.69 back in May, and it was just sitting around waiting for uh, the lawyer to get the release uh, to us. Uh, so the proper motion would be to file. And do we have such a motion? So move, Marcus. Second. All right. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. 3.7 is a notice of claim and injury for damages of Kurt Klesig. And check what do we got here. And actually, you can take 3.7 and 3.8 together if you'd like. OK. Happy to do that. So these are these are the uh, claims that were filed in relation to the uh, police-involved shooting at uh, the bar a Union Avenue Tap a, a while back. There's been a federal lawsuit filed. The claims themselves were under state law, and the time has passed for them to make to pursue any potential claims they would have under state law. Uh, and so the proper motion on these would be to file doesn't impact the ongoing federal uh, litigation, which is sort of stalled in federal court. 
Okay, got it. So we need a motion to um, uh, file documents uh, for with respect to both Classic in 3.7 and Heitzman in 3.8. So we moved. Have, all right. And is there a second? Second, Warren. All right. Any further discussion? I just, have a, I, just have a, I just have a quick question for Chuck. Uh, Chuck, then if this if this is now a federal lawsuit, then uh, there still could be some exposure to the city depending on on the outcome of that lawsuit. Yeah, potentially. Um, it's just that the, the claim itself really was related to the state law claim, and there is no longer any liability in the state law claim. All right. Thank you. Perfect. All right. Um, all those in favor, state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Chair votes aye. All right. We are. We need a motion to convene in closed session, pursuant to 1985 sub one sub G of the statutes, for the purpose of conferring with legal counsel for the governmental body who is rendering oral or written advice concerning the strategy to be adopted by the body with respect to litigation, which is like it is likely to become involved with, to it accurate repairs LLC versus the city of Sheboygan. Do we have such a motion? So moved, Warren. All right. Is there a second? Second. All right. We need uh, an individual vote. Uh, Alder Boren. Aye. Alder Savalio. Aye. Alder Mitchell. Aye. And I will vote aye. So the motion passes and we are in Madam, closed session. Madam Chair. This is yes. Marty. Before we go into closed session, I'm not sure if uh, City Attorney Adams and or if Scott Mieloff can assist us with this because this is where we ran into our challenge last time where we could not close our meeting because of how we went into closed session yet still being able to broadcast with the potential of coming back with uh, possible action needed after. So I'm right. not... You will need to come back into open session. So Scott should not leave. We just need to go off the air okay. and come back on the air when, when the uh, closed session is done. Okay. Thank you for that clarification. Yes, because was... Yeah, there, we will be uh, back in in uh, open session. So I don't see the chambers. Are we emptied out of those who need to leave? <laughs> so um, we need a motion to approve a settlement of the case referenced in the resolution in the amount of $91,627.38. Is there such a motion? So move, Warren. Second, Marcus. All right. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. Motion passes. So we are scheduled again for September 28th. Do we have any quorum issues among our members here? All right. A uh, motion to adjourn would be in order. Move to adjourn. Second. All right. All in favor, state aye. 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 Chair votes aye. We are adjourned. Thank you all. That was a pretty productive meeting. Thanks. Thanks.